Then moving on to more recent work that I've done, um, again focusing on this identity thing. So now we've touched on my early work, which was very surreal, uh, from drawing uh, and painting, and, and now and then this later work, which was about Kosovo. Then I did a new uh, piece of work, again about identity, uh, and that was called Shifting Borders. So I went back to Kosovo, I got a, a grant. Um, I didn't, again, know what I was doing. Um, so you kind of have to, to raise money um, for your projects. You have to make it very open-ended if you're an artist like me and has no, I just say, send me and I'll make an art piece. But that doesn't wear well with the AHRC, so you've got to have like, you know, really sort of big phrases, haven't you, Jen? And get Jen to write big phrases in there, no. So you, you kind of raise the money, then when I go there, I didn't know what I was going to do. And, and Kosovo and Albania and all the places I'm from had changed a lot. Um, Kosovo had had a horrible war, Albania had had a regime, um, a communist regime for 50 years and you may be following about the Berlin Wall coming down uh, 20 years ago and that was just like Albania um, and all parts of Eastern Europe. They had this uh, really uh, hard communist regime. So going back to these places full of nostalgia for me, um, they changed. People, had, people wanted McDonald's, you know, so I go there saying, oh, how lovely, a nice hay, haystack. And they go, should we build a, get rid of that haystack and build a McDonald's there, you know. They were just desperate to change. Uh, and that was the reality, and it wasn't what I was looking for. So I had to think fast uh, what I was going to do. So again, in that method of just trying things out and taking it and seeing what it looks like, I started to get a model. Uh, and dress them. I dress myself, in fact, in, in costume, in, in the folklore costume, Albanian costume, to see what this juxtaposition would look like um, and what costume means to people. So it became rather like a performance. Um, and, and you could examine what had gone on there. So here the, the costumed figure is by a mass... This was a massacre. Those six people that you see uh, on the graves were, were shot dead there. Um, on the side of the road, and the road's very high up. So the, farm, the farmer that was related to them, their relatives, have made their own um, makeshift concrete plank that goes at least five metres above uh, the land below it, because it's a valley, and you have to walk along this thin concrete plank, and you're, you're miles up there and see the graves. So they've made their own little monument. So once again, like the haystacks uh, that farmers have made, and then... Um, the destruction and putting the figure by it. This is me dancing by my work. So I actually thought I'll go into my work um, because I can't find any more in reality um, the things I'm looking for. So I'm going to have to either make them up to question them. So that's why I got the figure and put it in. And as I ran by the haystacks, there was a lady behind the haystacks, rather like the pictures we saw of Albert Kahn, um, she was also, she was knitting, I think, uh, behind the haystacks, leaned up there, chilling. And I, she was surprised to see someone in full Albanian costume. So uh, there was a sort of, even like a performance thing happening when people would see me in the costume. Then I would put models into a certain p picture to see what came from that. And then it became the process. As I said earlier, it's not sort of getting there for me, or the final result. It's the journey, it's the discovery, it's, it's sort of doing things. And here, um, I'm actually there putting, you know, setting the model in the picture. So it's more about me trying to find some sense. Here I put the camera on a tripod and ran into the picture on self-timer. So, um, so I'm actually slightly out of focus because I couldn't focus it right. But then you've got this mood of feeding the hens, and that's, um, they're making special whiskey in the background. Um, and then this surreal, you know, somebody's worked in Germany, got loads of euros or Deutschmarks, come home and just banged up a great big factory that's got no architectural sense. It's sort of really odd and surreal outside Pristina. So I would put my, you know, that's me actually in the picture. So you've got this sense of this old costume and identity and um, a surreal building. 
there's me again. So uh, I, then I work with real people and actors. So I, there's me putting in my actor um, in the costume against people that are really, you know, and these are street cleaners. Uh, and they've got, um, they're cleaning the streets with their brushes. So they've not even got, they've got made, made brooms that they've made themselves. Uh, looking through the veil. So still, even though I, tr I try to get more poetry and more uh, interesting pictures as well as the pictures that describe things. This picture I did for, um, you know, I just was driving past and saw the guy with his kids and just said, hold it, and ran out for a few minutes and sat in the picture with them. Um, and I looked like the mother of the village, you know. It just it had that uh, idea that it could have been done a hundred years ago, but the title is Artist with uh, Villagers, so that you, in the title you read that it's actually been set up. This is my dad, and he's an architect, a failed architect, and he's got all his um, projects in the corner there that have not been done. He lives on top of a building in Pristina, so I've got that father-daughter, and it's my father I get my origin, my Albanian origin from. So just trying things out. Uh, and then, as I said, looking at other people that deal with that kind of thing. This is the socialist realist work in Albania. Um, this is by Denis Uniku, and it's called The Villagers, The Shepherds. Um, the titles are always brilliant. It's Shepherds in the Highlands. Uh, and it's, I looked at socialist realist painting, even though it's a, done from a totalitarian um, regime and they've been forced to make positive work, there was something in it of optimism and identity. Uh, I know that we used, I mean, shepherds never get into full gear and start playing. They're usually been rained on and had a really hard life and they're looking after their sheep, so they would never do this. But it's, there's some quality in this work. This is, we are always ready uh, for, uh, actually, let me look at the actual, we are always ready um, by Aggie Shami. And this kind of the grandma can bring up the kids and the, and the people are out there fighting and we're ready for these so-called invaders that never came. So this was what the people there were living with. Um, the Met Metallica um, compound and here is on top of, this is in communist times and the figures are on top of a, um, this, this complex. And the reality, this is by a colleague of mine um, who did a piece um, called A Slow and Motionless Death. Um, by Bevis Fusha, and he's done a film because, in fact, the reality is that uh, there's 20,000 tons of toxic waste that the communists left behind in this, in this cheerful Metallica place, exactly in this place, um, and 15,000 people in the area are dying of, of chemical-related diseases. So um, there's, the reality is much, much harsher than that. Um, so looking back on what I was going to do, again about identity, because um, I, my feelings are that you, even when there's things that are bad in your history, you have to sort of accept it. Uh, and so I put this socialist realist figure, she's sort of um, gest making a sort of gesture like she's singing like those um, guys, shepherds on the hill. And she's standing on a bunker uh, dump. So and the bunkers were made by the communist regime and put throughout... Albania to make people paranoid. That was their only reason, because um, in a war they wouldn't protect people. So they just wanted people to feel that they would be invaded and that would make them stay in Albania for 40 years. So you can imagine it was a hard, hard time. And when there was freedom and liberation, what can you do with all these bunkers? So they put them in a bunker dump and there I am standing there. And here's um, behind the National Gallery. And what do you do with all the Lenin, Lenin sculptures and the, and the socialist realist sculptures? Well, they're, they're behind the, bunk, uh, the um, National Gallery. And there's the policeman that guards the National Gallery. Um, but an, an, in the vaults underneath, you can see um, Marx, Lenin sculptures, Enver Hodja, who was the dictator, 